Now we are going to look at commodities. Commodities are what we call in Arabic sila. They are divided into soft commodities and hard commodities. Soft commodities are what we call agricultural commodities. And examples of these are corn, wheat, rice, butter, pork, cocoa, coffee, sugar, and things like that. What kind of questions will you get on soft commodities and hard commodities? The same questions over and over again. What factors affect supply and what factors affect demand? The factors that affect supply of agricultural commodities are weather. So if the weather is bad, then the farms will not be able to harvest. This will affect the supply of cocoa, coffee, wheat, sugar, rice, and so forth. Land availability, especially when we talk about urban, urban means city, urban expansion, watch out for this word. Urban expansion means when cities are growing and growing, villages are getting smaller and smaller. Villages is where the farming happens. So because cities are growing, farming is decreasing. Diseases and insects, plants get sick and there are insects that damage plants. If a certain plant or a certain harvest is attacked by insects or diseases, there will be no harvest this year. That means supply will go down. Technology also affects the supply of soft commodities. A long time ago, when they, whenever they used to harvest a farm of corn or wheat, the whole family, the father and the wife, and the mother and the children, they will all be in the farm cutting down the wheat. A farm used to take them one week to harvest. Now that we have tractors and technology, a farmer will sit in a tractor, drive around for a few hours, and then he has harvested the whole field. So technology has made supply easier for soft commodities. Factors that affect demand are wealth. Can they afford these? Consumer taste, do they like this? Do they prefer cocoa, chocolate, or coffee, or tea? Are people having more sugar? Yes, people are having more sugar. We are all getting fatter every day, and so forth. And habits, tax. Tax is when the government taxed, taxes some items. For example, UAE government puts a tax on sugar to lower demand, but I don't think that worked. I think a lot of people are still drinking the same number of Coca-Cola and Pepsi. And so forth. Now let's look at hard commodities which are base metals or precious metals. So called hard commodities. Metals or al maadin in Arabic are divided into base metals and these are cheap or precious metals and these are expensive. Of course precious metals are gold and silver. Cheap metals are copper, aluminum, lead. You can also add their zinc, tin. Yeah, these are the cheap metals. Again, we need to look at, this, at, the, at the factors that affect the supply and demand of these commodities. The factors that affect supply is the cost of extraction, cost of mining. If it's getting more, exa more expensive to mine for copper and gold and silver, then the price of copper and gold and silver will go up. Cost of production, environmental laws, that means if countries have started putting laws on mining, the supply of metals will go down. And when the supply of metals go down, the price will go up. Political instability, countries like, for example, the largest exporter of gold in the world is South Africa. If there's any political instability in South Africa, the supply of gold in South Africa goes down and the price of gold goes up. Factors that affect demand. Whenever we are talking about metals, factors that affect demand is mostly China and India. These are the major players of metals in around the world. If China and India say that they want steel or copper, you can add steel here, Hadid, steel or copper, or gold, if they say they want, you will start noticing that the price will go up. Because every single manufacturer, every single mining company will start to sell to China and India. If China and India say they don't want gold or steel anymore, you notice that the price will drop heavily. Because they are the big players, they are the big demanders of metals around the world. 
Also in commodities, we have the energy market. And by energy, of course, we mean the main player is oil. Most questions on oil, they come on the characteristics of oil, the types of oil. Oil is characterized in three things. First of all, where does it come from? So we know there is a Brent oil, Texas oil, Dubai oil, and so forth. Oil is also characterized by its density. So you have low density oil, we call it light, or high density oil, we call it heavy. Not all oil is the same. Some countries, they produce lo low density called light or high density called heavy. Three, it's also characterized by its sulfur. How much sulfur there is in it? Sulfur in Arabic is kibrit. So some oil has low sulfur, we call it sweet. Some oil has high sulfur, we call it sour. Certain countries, like US and UK, they prefer low sulfur. Certain countries, like Asia, China, and Japan, they prefer high sulfur. I was reading a few days ago that their Kuwait usually manufactures high sulfur. So now Kuwait is getting a new market in China because high sulfur, there is not much demand for it. So, see, uh, questions on oil usually come as follows. Oil that is called sour and light. What does that mean? It means that sour, it means it has high sulfur, and light, it means that it is low density. Alternatives to oil are biofuel, and this is what we call clean energy. Ethanol and methanol, known as clean energy. Recently seen an increase in demand and production, not much here. And then we have coal, coal which is considered the dirtiest energy, but also the cheapest. It's widely used, widely available and used in many energy producing methods. Now, if you are going to get any questions on energy, it's either going to be on the different types of oil, that's one question, or it's going to come from this next page. This next page is basically telling you about petroleum refiners. So if you have a refinery in Arabic, a refinery like Shell or Total, these big oil companies, they extract oil from land. So this is the oil, the raw oil, also known as crude oil. Shell will take this raw oil, they will refine it, and then they will offer it to us as finished product. They will sell it to us as finished product. Example, petrol, gasoline, kerosene, and so forth. Now the price of oil between the raw market and the finished market is called the crack spread. The crack spread is the difference in the price of, of oil in the raw material market and in the finished market. The crack spread is tradable. People trade and make money out of it. The crack spread is also called intercommodity spread. The crack spread is mostly traded on the CME NYNEX. You know this one? This is where most people trade the crack spread. Most people play on the difference between the oil price in the raw market and the oil price in the finished market. The most important factors that affect oil prices is extreme weather, political crisis, especially in the Middle East, and other world events.